Hello and welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday to everyone for being with us. My name is Ashley Jones. I'm with the Venture Center. And again, we're happy that you're with us today for this exciting workshop. We're so excited to have Hillary Trudell here. She's the executive director of The Yarn. And uh, this workshop today is all about storytelling. And whether you're an entre entrepreneur, um, this, is, this is so important for entrepreneurs, whether you're pitching to uh, an audience at a competition for prize money, or you're pitching to investors or talking to family and friends about your business. It's so important to know how to tell that story. And anyone, quite frankly, it's important to know how to tell stories. So today we're going to learn uh, from Hillary Trudell on what that takes, how to, how to craft a good story. But before we get to that, I have some, some housekeeping and, and things to get to. Um, Wanted to thank our sponsors, of course, Frost Accounting Firm, the Little Rock Regional Chamber, Simmons Bank, and Wright Lindsay Jennings for their support of our community programs. And with those programs, we do have a few more coming up uh, for the remainder of uh, the month, October. Can't believe we're in October. October 8th, which is this Friday, we have a cybersecurity workshop coming up with Mainstream. They're going to be talking about what you need to look out for and things small businesses need to be aware of when it comes to cybersecurity. So go ahead and register for that one if you're interested. Also on October 22nd, uh, we have a Lift the Rock program featuring uh, business and tech collaborators. Um, Chris Wright with his business and Bob East will be here to talk about cybersecurity um, and Techtober and putting a spotlight on those tech businesses here in, in the state. And also on October 27th, we have a fireside chat with Garbo Hearn. Uh, so all of these programs are available, free, open to the public. If you're interested in any of those, you're welcome to go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, follow us on social, and subscribe to any of these programs. And we'd love to have you there. Without further ado, I want to encourage people throughout this uh, workshop to use the chat feature. I'm sure Hillary's going to be engaging and ask questions. So feel free to use that chat feature to ask and answer questions. You can also use the Q&A function down at the bottom to ask a question, or there's a little button uh, that says raise hand. You can click that and we can unmute you if you'd like to ask your question live. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Hillary for today's workshop. Hillary. Thank you so much, Ashley. I really appreciate uh, being here. I love entrepreneurs and I love talking about storytelling. So it's gonna be a really exciting lunch hour for me. And I see a really great group in the chat here, um, or I'm looking at the attendees, so really great group. Thanks for spending your lunch hour with me and with the Venture Center. So we're gonna talk about storytelling today. Uh, again, I'm Hilary Trudell, I'm the executive producer of The Yarn. And if you haven't heard about The Yarn, The Yarn is a um, soon to be a nonprofit in Little Rock, Arkansas. We've been around for, we're going into our fifth season. Our mission is to amplify voices, build understanding, and create a space for human connection. And we do all this through storytelling. So we have shows that are centered around themes, and we have people from the community telling stories about those themes or centered on those themes. But before they get to the stage, they are, uh, they go through story coaching with me and rehearsal processes, and we want to make sure that we give storytellers the tools to effectively tell their stories in a short amount of time with impact. So what does that have to do with you? Oh, and also I want to just mention that we have a book coming out. So that's really exciting. It's an analogy or um, it's a, a conglomeration of 37 stories told from the RN stage over the past four years. And that's going to be really exciting coming out soon. All that to be said, storytelling is not only a form of community engagement and something we value as a um, relationship builder through the yarn, but it can be an essentially powerful tool for business owners. So today we are going to learn the basic elements of crafting a story so that you have the tools to begin to develop your own entrepreneurship story through the values that you will identify hopefully today. So what does our agenda look like in the next very short, probably 55 minutes, we're gonna talk about storytelling fundamentals, discovering core values and developing, start to develop at least your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship story. That's a mouthful. So it's really exciting. So if you're in the wrong room, 
feel free to stay. Or if, if you're here for something else, you can pop out and go, go get your lunch. But I'm happy for all of those who are here and sticking with us. And it's going to be a really exciting and interesting session. I'm also not much of a lecturer. I do have uh, some knowledge that I want to uh, you know, impart upon you, but this is interactive. I'm a facilitator by trade. So I want to make sure that we are interacting with each other and it's not just me talking. So with that being said, and feel free to just put it in the chat. Let's do the chat on this one. And I might call on you to expand a little bit, but let's just put it in the chat. Why is storytelling important for businesses? So just put it in the chat. Why you think one word, two words, why is storytelling important for businesses? What do we think? Connection, great. Thank you, KJ. Connection, why else? Why is storytelling important? To be understood. Kisa, awesome. People feel more comfortable when they know who you are and how you started. Engagement, people can relate to stories because you're always selling something, showcasing value to customers, able to tell your experiences. Absolutely, all of these things. I'm gonna bring a humanity back to business. Ooh, interesting. I'm gonna ask, um, let's see, Ashley, if you do not mind, and you can always say pass. You can always say pass if I call on you. If you don't mind unmuting yourself and telling us a little bit about what you mean by showcasing value to customers, do you mind expanding a little bit about on that? Absolutely, happy to. So I am not an entrepreneur myself, but I work obviously with several entrepreneurs every year. And so the idea is to portray or convince your customer to buy something. So what is that value you can provide to your customer? And you do that through hopefully being able to tell a good story about the why of your business and the problem you're solving and the solution you're providing to that customer. Absolutely. And so much of that is rooted in values, which we will get into in just a few minutes. Um, I want to also ask Tammy, if you don't mind unmuting yourself and telling us a little bit about you put relationship, if you don't mind expanding a little bit upon that. If you were able to. You're muted if you're trying to talk. Um, Tammy, we will come back to you. Let's ask Melissa, bring humanity back to business. Do you mind unmuting yourself and telling us a little bit about that? Melissa? Hey there, sorry about that. No <laughs> Finding the unmute button. I know, it's a daily struggle. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, in the larger scheme of things, uh, capitalism and business has been branding was one thing. And now there's an opportunity to really personalize it. And so storytelling is that personal human behind the product, the service, the business being provided. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for that. And we're going to look at, um, a couple examples of a well-known company who's by um, most people's standards has done very well and how they actually over the years have been tapping into um, the values that they believe and specifically of the time are incredibly important to, to their, um, their audiences. And we'll talk about how bringing that humanity into their marketing and the relationship into their marketing and their storytelling has had a huge impact on their sales. So we'll look at that a little bit as well. So stories are incredibly important for a lot of reasons, right? We've been telling stories since the beginning of uh, humans being able to communicate, right? There's a, a great quote by an author who said, you know, we had thumbs that told us to, to hang on and stories told us what to hang on to, right? So they've been helping us um, both pass down information, keep family history alive, um, survival, right? Hey, if you see this hairy thing with really sharp teeth, you need to run away from it. This is what happened when that guy did it, right? So we've been telling stories 
uh, for a very long time, you know, cave paintings are stories, right? So stories are an innate part of human nature and human development and biology. When we apply that to business, the reasons that we connect to stories are the same across all spectrums, right? So we talk about the reasons we like certain movies or certain books or certain plays or certain stories that grandma tells. They have similar reasons to why we connect to the stories told through businesses. So we'll get a little bit into, I'm going to be talking a lot about values today. Steve Jobs once said, the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of entire generation to come. So one of, arguably one of the most successful um, entrepreneurs in history saw the value in how story can really um, set the vision for how a company is going to unfold and where it's going to try to go. And this isn't all just, um, you know, Hillary's thoughts. So I just want to um, ground us very, very briefly in the science of storytelling. So science or storytelling is um, one of the most effective ways at creating empathy with, which in a hu within a human brain. The reason behind that is something happens when we tell stories called neurocoupling. And when I tell a story, say I'm telling a story to Kissa about running through the leaves, the part of her brain that would be lighting up if she were actually herself running through leaves would be lighting up. So her brain is trying to put her in my story. Now we'll never truly understand the lived experience of any other individual except ourselves. but storytelling is as close as we can get to standing in someone else's shoes. And why is this important? For entrepreneurs, it's important because people engage with companies and buy things and make choices based on emotions and connection, right? So if we can create a form of connection through the stories that we tell with our audience, with our consumers, through storytelling, and get this neurocoupling all fired up, they're going to be more likely to engage with your company and hopefully your products. So another one last quote I'll give you is from a screenwriter, Lena Waithe. She um, is one of the uh, writers for Master of None. I don't know if anyone saw that show, but I really like her uh, and the work she does. She says, I'm writing my stories so that others might see fragments of themselves, right? So this is just another form of how do we relate to stories and see ourselves in them? Okay. And we do that through values. So this is where we're gonna get into our first little activity in just a second, but essentially the values of your company, the values of hopefully your values are in line with the values of your company, right? But what does your company, what does your business, what does your organization stand for? What do you stand for, right? What are the values inherent to you and your company that people can connect with, understand, and hopefully get behind. Um, and an example that I want to show really quickly, um, and the company that I was speaking about before is Coca-Cola, right? So when we talk about values and we talk about storytelling, I just want to make it really, really evident that you do not have to be an amazing pontificator to um, communicate your story effectively. You do not have to speak for a long time. You don't even have to speak. When we look at this marketing ad, this is from 1986 from Coca-Cola, right? So Coca-Cola is what? It's a beverage. It's a sweet, carbonated, somewhat unhealthy, <laughs> people would argue, beverage. But Coca-Cola over the years has done amazing in terms of telling the stories that connect with American and over, across the world, international values, right? So we see this ad right here. It's literally a can of Coke, but it says red, white, and you, right? Because the colors of Coke are red and white. But what else do we think about when we hear red, white, and you? What value or values does this very simple ad tap into? Patriotism, right? Red, white, and blue. That's what we think of when we hear red, white, and right? So three words, a picture of Coke, and 
automatically Coca-Cola has tapped into patriotism, right? So that's a value that's very inherent in um, depending on where this is shown, depending, uh, you know, what what the time frame is, right? If patriotism is something that's going to get people to buy Coke, here we go, right? So values can be communicated very quickly and easily. Um, and actually, before we do, no, actually, I wanna, let's do this activity first. I was going to show you the ad, but I'll show you the ad afterwards. So we are going to start exploring the values that you hold dear, right? And these should be the values um, that also circulate around your organization, right? Um, especially if it is a company that you've created. But let's start with just you as an individual, okay? So here's the activity we're gonna have. If you have something to write with, great. You can also type on your computer. Um, if you have nothing to write down or no pen or paper, no, no screen, that's okay. You can just think about it. But this is the activity we're gonna do, right? So I am gonna have, this is a very long list of values and it's not comprehensive. There are values that exist that are not on this list and they can totally be used and that's absolutely fine and appropriate. So what I want you to do is from this list, I just want you to choose eight. And I'm gonna stop talking in just a minute and I'm gonna give you a few minutes to choose eight values from this list. These should be values of all of these that stand out to you that you feel like are the most important to you, hopefully, and your organization. If you have to choose one, go with your organization or your company. Okay, so choose eight. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you two minutes to do this. I just want you to write down, type in your mind, choose eight. I'm gonna give you one more minute. Make sure you have eight. And you can absolutely, thank you, Mimi, you can absolutely add others' oh, passion. Yeah. Anything you don't see on here, which you know is your, your core value, you can absolutely write it down. Okay, if you've got your eight, give me a quick thumbs up, either your little emoji or if I can see you, your thumb. Okay, I'll give you about 30 more seconds. Okay, so let's go with what you got. And here is what we are going to do next. So you've written down eight. 
and I want you to get rid of two. You can throw them away, you can cross them out, you can delete them off your computer screen if you want, but I want you to get rid of two. Of the eight, get rid of two. And here's where I really want you to center in on the value of your, that is connected to your company if you haven't done that already. So get rid of two. And just so everyone knows what's coming, you're gonna get rid of two more. And then two more, and you're gonna have two left. And you get to keep your two. So I want you to go from eight to two. What are those core values? Oh, hang on just a second. Thank you, KJ. But I want us all to do it at once. So give me your thumbs up if you've got your two values. Well, everybody's putting them in there. That's fine. <laughs> put them in. So why don't we go ahead and everybody put in your two values into the chat, the two you have left. So I have create, creativity, making a difference from KJ. I have innovation, recognition, passion, commitment, inspiration, love, integrity, usefulness, community, making a difference. Quality and creativity, encouragement and empathy. Great, these are awesome. Okay, now optimism and relationships, trustworthiness and honesty. Great. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. So, who wants to unmute themselves? Miosha, ethics and encouragement. Awesome. Why did you keep these two? Why are these two the most important to you? Sub question How do these values show up in your company? Why are these two the most important to you? And I am going to, because I know her and I, I know a little bit about your organization. Denise, I'm wondering if you would mind unmuting yourself and telling us why you kept the two that you, you kept, trustworthiness and honesty. Denise, are you able to, to chat with us? Okay, how about Miosha, ethics and encouragement? Are you able to chat with us and tell us? Oh, how to unmute on mobile. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure, but if you don't have an unmute, I always just have an unmute button, but if you can't, that's okay. Um, so let's see who is not on their mobile device and would like to unmute and tell us why you choose, why you chose the values that you chose. I think the easiest way to do that, let's get you to raise your hand. If you can raise your hand, we can see, um, the attendees. We have one hand raised. 
Oh, we have three. Lots of engagement Mickey. today. I love it. How about you, Mickey? Let's unmute Mickey. Hold on. Oh. There we go. Let's see. It okay. uh, looks like she's muted now. Or Mickey. Or Mickey. Mickey, are you able to share with us? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. How are you? Hi. hi. Well, um, sometimes um, you have these, you work in a drudgery job most of your, of your life. And you harbor all these great ideas and you wonder, will I ever get a chance to act on, on my thoughts? Mm. And so towards the end of my career, I, I quit my job and started a company. And a part of doing that is to create recognition uh, through innovation. I wanted to do something new, something different. Um, uh, Ashley knows this, but I wanted to create wearable paper products, wearable paper products. Um, a little bit of a story. My dad was in the printing business. My brother-in-law and sister in the printing business. I always wanted to take printing in a new direction. And so I thought, why not innovate? And if you have an undistinguished career, such as I did, um, you want to create a record for yourself of having created something new, something different, something innovative. And in my case, um, a brand identity uh, of uh, value, safety, and social awareness. Okay. So, so uh, that's my story. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Kissa, do you want to share why you chose your two values or the two that you kept? Um, yeah. yeah, sure. So I chose to keep relationships and optimism simply because I feel like in any business, you need, I prefer to take the optimistic route. Um, but with me hiring Class A CDO truck drivers, and I just like to feel like um, no matter what, I'll be able to help the driver, even if that's not now, or having to, you know, push them off a little bit later, just being optimistic that each phone call and each connection um, will work out for the best. And again, that goes back to relationships. I think it's important to build relationships in um, because I'm in the relationship business. If it's not with the carriers, then it's also with the drivers. So I feel like those are two core values that my business definitely possess and look to focus on. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then Tammy, would you like to share? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Okay. Um, so my business is custom, and that leads to creativity. If I don't have, um, if I don't have the creativity, then my product isn't any different than anything else you could just purchase um, in a typical big box store. And along with that, quality is very important. Um, my customers want something unique and want it to be done well, um, my product is not just a throwaway item. So um, doing quality work, having good workmanship in my product is very important to me um, because my name is on it and that means something. Yeah, thank you so much. So drilling down into these core values. So why are we doing this, right? So, well, for, for starters, understanding the core values of your organization and your company is not only going to help you in your communication of your, of your story, right? What are the values that I want to make evident in my story to my customers, but also honing in on what stories you want to tell about your company. What are the stories that highlight the... Um, your value of family? What are the stories that highlight your core value of transparency, right? Or ethics or whatever these values that are your core values. And being specific about these values and really honing in on these values is going to make your, organ or your audience understand, okay, this is what that company stands for. It's clear. I understand this is this is what their stories say. This is what the founding story is about. This, these are the values that are being communicated through, through the stories. And the clearer we are about that, the more obvious it is to our audience, the clearer choice the audience will then have in which, um, which company to, 
to invest their time and resources in. Okay, so we're going to get into, so we've talked a little bit about values and I want to give us, um, I'm going to give you a story example in just a few minutes, but let's talk about story structure a little bit. Okay, so we've talked about the values inherent in stories. Um, you know, we identify, so let's, let's use this example of Finding Nemo. So we identify with um, a lot of Pixar movies that are cartoon, uh, cartoon stories. They're stories about not real people usually or real or even people in general, right? So why do we sit down and watch Finding Nemo and sometimes maybe every time cry, every time we watch it, every time we have that moment at the end where Marlon and Nemo get back together or you know, why do we cry at Toy Story? Why do we cry? Why do we cry in any of these stories where we're watching not real people even on, on screen, right? We watch, we cry and we have emotions and we feel joy and sadness because of the values inherently within these stories, right? So Finding Nemo is about a cartoon fish. Why do I care whether or not a cartoon fish gets out of a fish tank in Australia somewhere and gets reunited by his dad fish? Why do I care? A, they're not even real fish. B, they're fish, right? So and I, again, that goes back to we care because of the values innately written into the script of the story, right? So I'm talking about the structure of Finding Nemo, I'm going to lay it out pretty basically in terms of story structure. And then we're going to talk about how this relates to potentially the story that you were going to connect to your business. So in, in Finding Nemo, just like in any story, there is a protagonist and we'll go, there are two parallel stories in this movie specifically, but let's talk about Marlon being the protagonist. So Marlon is the father of Nemo. And in the story that you are going to tell about your business and about you, you are the protagonist. You are the protagonist in the story of your life. You are the protagonist in the story of the founding of your business, or at least one of them, but the protagonist is the main character, right? So in Finding Nemo, Marlon is the protagonist and Marlon wants something. So in any story that is propelled forward, the character, the main character, the protagonist has to want something, right? In Finding Nemo, what does Marlon want? It is literally in the title of the movie, so... Um, but outside of that, Marlin wants to keep Nemo safe, right? Marlin is a very afraid fish at the beginning of Finding Nemo. He has had experiences. I think his, his wife fish and his other little fish eggs got eaten by some barracuda. He's very afraid. He wants more than anything, more than anything for Nemo to be safe, right? And this creates a type of overprotectiveness in Marlin. So he wants Nemo to be safe. He's overprotective. Then what happens? There is a challenge that gets in the way of what Marlin wants. Marlin wants Nemo to be safe. The challenge that presents itself is Nemo gets kidnapped by a snorkeler. Okay. So all of a sudden Marlin cannot keep Nemo safe. So he has a choice, right? So he has a challenge in the way of getting what he wants, which is to keep Nemo safe. The challenge is that Nemo gets taken. So Marlon has a choice. I can stay on this reef. I can send somebody else out to go and look for Nemo, or I can myself venture into the sea, face my fears and try to rescue my son. So challenge, choice, and then finally, at the end, after all of the adventures and obstacles both Marlon and Nemo has got, gone through, there is a change. Marlon becomes a different fish. He has a better relationship with Nemo. He's faced his fears. He's more fun. He's more comfortable with himself. He has created friendships. So his journey has not only been the catalyst for um, essentially him, him going after what he wants has been the catalyst for him changing. And the changing is usually seen as the moral of the story. So when we're talking about story structure, these are three C's that I'll, I hope you'll remember. And they are the challenge, the choice, and the change. But in order for there to be a challenge in any story, the character has to want something. And usually that desire stems directly from the values. So when we look at Finding Nemo, the values inherent 
in that movie are family, right? Keeping a family together and friendship, right? Facing your fears. Um, so, you know, that's why we relate to it. But within the structure, you have the three C's. So if you don't remember anything, the three C's. Marla learned how old to use. Yes. And it, there was a lot of challenges that Marlon went through to, to find Nemo. It was a great adventure. Like many Pixar Disney films are, there's a physical adventure happening. But in terms of your story, thinking about what you want, the challenge that gets in the way, got in the way, is getting in the way, the choice you have to make. Do you keep going after what you want? Do you change direction? Do you not go after what you want? And then there's a change. And I want to make it really clear there, just because a character, whether it's fictional, nonfiction, whether we're talking about you or someone else, just because a character doesn't get what they want, because that happens, that does not mean it's not a story. Sometimes the most compelling stories can be about not getting what we want and making a change because of that. So before I go forward here, I want to show us a story by that same company, that same Coca-Cola company. We're going to watch a really quick story. And I want you to not only kind of, uh, or not only identify what values are inherent in this story, but the challenge, choice, and change that you see in the story as well. I got to unplug my earbud. Learned that. And I'm going to play this for you. And Ashley, just give me a heads up if you can hear it. Or thumbs up, thank you. Okay. Coca-Cola bringing some tears on a Wednesday. <laughs> so obviously Coca-Cola has done a really amazing job of aligning themselves with Santa Claus in general and that value of, of Christmas. Right. So, but what are the core values that we saw in this very short story produced by Coca-Cola? What's the main value? And you can put it in the chat if you want to. 
just type it, that might be easier. It's the main value that you saw in the story. Determination, okay, absolutely. Family and togetherness, mm -hmm. yep. I think both of those are absolutely pretty evident in the story. Um, the importance of family, right? And this father and daughter and how he was gonna go to all ends of the earth, climb and hike his way to the North Pole to deliver her letter to Santa, right? So the familiness. But the interesting twist on this is we have, and let's think about the challenge, choice and change in this. You have the main character, who's the dad. Um, he wants to deliver his, this Christmas letter to Santa from his daughter, right? The challenge is, the post is leaving. Oh no, I'm stranded in the middle of an ocean. Oh no, I have to climb my way to the North Pole and go through all of these, you know, um, apparent challenges. And then um, ultimately we get there, it's closed, Santa gives him a ride back. But what's the change, right? So there's this moment of like, ooh, something's a little bit different than just I was able to deliver this letter to the North Pole. What's the change? Perseverance? Absolutely. What does he recognize about the letter once he opens it? It was actually all along that she wanted him, right? Not So the goal in his mind, he thought, oh, if I just get this letter to the North Pole, I'm doing what my daughter wants. But ultimately thinking about the actual value here is togetherness, right? So while we might think, oh, I'm going to go on this amazing journey to do this thing for my daughter, it's really the most important thing is being together, right? So it has a little bit of a flip of the value there too, which I think is, I mean, there are brilliant storytellers and marketers right over there. So hopefully you saw in that very short story, the challenge, choice and change. So in looking at you as an entrepreneur and you as a business owner, we've talked a little bit about your values. Now I want to get into, in just the few minutes that we have left, what is your story, right? And so we're going to, I'm going to give you this prompt and get, give you just a few minutes to jot some notes down. And then I'm going to give you an example of how you can incorporate values in storytelling in a very short way, in a very abbreviated way. So this, again, does not have to be wordy pontification, right? It can be like a very short way of letting your audience know or your consumer or your customers know how they can relate to you and a little bit about you without knowing too much. But in order for us to get to that truncated version, we have to get the whole thing down on paper. We have to get the whole thing out at least very clear in our minds so that then you can pick and choose depending on who your audience is, how much time you have to communicate your story, what your, you know, in a lot of ways, um, many entrepreneurs only have a very, very, very short amount of time to connect with their audience, right? So how can we do it in a very short amount of time? So here is your prompt, and I'm just going to give you a few minutes to jot some things down. And then I'm going to give you an example of how this can look after uh, um, truncation. But again, we got to get everything down. So your personal ref reflection prompt is why did you start this company? So why did you start the organization, company, business that you started? What's the why behind the company? So think within it, what did you want? So was there something you wanted at some point in your life that you tried to go after that you didn't get, that you did get? Is there something that you want that you're going after with this company, right? So what is the goal that you're trying to achieve or what's a goal that you were trying to achieve? So this can go in a couple of different ways, right? It can be something that happened to you or in your past that was the catalyst for starting this company or it's potentially an, um, uh, an issue or a challenge that you've seen that you were trying to address through creating this company, right? A need. So what's a challenge that's getting in the way? So potentially, you know, you're perceiving a need. So, um, you know, your mother really needed X, Y, and Z. You saw that this was a challenge for her and that she didn't have the resources to get X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to create this to potentially help with that, right? So thinking about that, what are some challenges that are getting in the way from people reaching their goals? 
and choices, right? So what choice is the choice that you made starting this company or did you make a choice before that then led you to eventually choose this company, right? So think about your three C's. And then what's the change, right? How did you change as a person? Did your journey story create change in you that then was the catalyst for starting this company? Are you trying to create change through this company? So the story can be in, um, in terms of on this, you know, it doesn't have to be, oh, I, this happened to me, I made a choice. The choice was to start the company. This is the change I'm trying to make. It can be that the story happened before. And then that was the catalyst for creating this company, right? When we're thinking about challenge and choice and change, it doesn't have to be linear. Or even um, in terms of this happened first, then this, then this. But those are the three elements that are core in any story. So we want to make sure that they're inherent in yours as well. And then finally, and this is one of the most important things, is what values does your story reflect, right? People have a really short amount of time to know if they're going to trust you or get behind what you're selling. And a lot of that just has to do with, do I connect with this person on a value level? Do I trust them? Do I agree in some inherent way on the value that they are demonstrating through their story? Okay. So I'm going to be quiet for just a few minutes, just to give you some time to make some notes. Um, this is a short session, so it's not going to be that we're not going to have a whole lot of time for sharing, but I do want to give you an opportunity just to write some notes down. And then I want to give you an example of a truncated version of this. So I'm going to stop talking for about two minutes. So just jot some notes down and then we'll go from here. Okay, so I'm just going to ask if there's, you know, do not feel like you have to, but if anybody feels like they want to just take a stab at framing their story around the challenge, choice, and change, 
I want to give us an opportunity to hear that today. So before I go on to the final kind of example, does anybody want to share? And again, with this one, if you'd like to raise your hand, we'll call on you. Yes, thank you. I'm so used to, oh. Um, Argelian, were you raising your hand? Yes, it's Argelian. Hi. Argelian, hi. Thanks for raising your hand. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll take a stab at this while I can stay on here. Um, so th my why is because there is a lack of achievement among students um, that normally um, persists into adulthood. And then I have my own child who has specific learning disabilities. Um, so this forms my why. Um, the challenge that I have seen is that, you know, students are failing to master grade level content, but there's also this, um, this lack of access to affordable support for these students, for the majority of those who are struggling. Mm -hmm. And so um, the challenge is how to offer expert services in a way that is affordable for myself and other people who would be offering these services. The choice that I had to make is that um, I could keep the mentality that I can only do the little that I can do here in my classroom when I can for 50 minutes or 80 minutes, um, or I could step out on a limb and I'm sorry, I'm on lunch, that's a school bill. I could step out on the limb um, and I could create a team to fill in the gap. Um, that would take a lot of time, a lot of resources, um, but those are my two choices. And so I decided to make the latter choice. Um, and the change I hope to make is to increase academic achievement and upward mobility um, so that we can have um, more of a competitive economy in Arkansas um, instead of just accepting it for what it is currently. Very cool. And thank you so much for sharing. What were the two values that you um, ended up with? Um, my two values are learning and growth. Wonderful. Um, I'm also hearing within that, especially what you talked about at the end is opportunity. And thank you so much for sharing. You have, you have such an amazing, um, not an only amazing components to your story, but because you have direct experience with the challenges that lack of resources have um, present have given you and your child, you have a direct, you actually have the ability to have a specific story of how this can affect families and potentially students, right? And so I would, if we were doing a story coaching, I would really want to talk about, okay, let's talk about your story and then let's expand it out into how does that affect other children, right? So, and this is a tip for everyone, the more specific we can be, especially at the beginning of our stories and then expand outward, gives audience something to hold on to. So I, I have a specific example of how um, your, you or your child faced a challenge where they did not have the resources that were ample to help them succeed in X, Y, or Z way, right? And so then expanding to that to many, I see, and are you a classroom teacher, Virgilian? I am, um, but my classroom is only intervention. Okay. And that's fine. But, you know, as a classroom teacher, I have also seen this you know, from child to child to child. So it's not just my child, then you're expanding it out. Right. And so I had this choice. I could do, I could do this and I could just accept that this is the way it is, or I could step out, take a risk and do this because it's not my, just my child, it's children across Arkansas. And the more that we invest in this, the more we're investing in the future of our state or whatever it is. Right. So you're bringing your specific story to then um, the impact that just honing in on children that um, and 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 pr and stepping into this gap can have an effect on the greater state. So it's brilliant. I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story as well. That was really cool. And I would love to talk to you about it more. I think that sounds like such a cool such a cool project. 
such a cool company. What's the name of your company, Argelian? Um, my company is Gilmer's Learning Solutions. Um, and of course, I would love to connect with you and let's, you know, flesh this thing out, of course. Yeah, let's talk more for sure. So I want to just give, and thank you so much. And I'll, I'll put my contact information up here in just a second. But I want to just put in the, we just have a few minutes left. I want to give a really, really quick, and you could do this with any story. Like our, our Jillian just talked about uh, her challenge, choice and change. The story is there. Um, sometimes I say storytellers and there's really a little bit of digging that needs to happen. It's not, there's no digging there. Our Jillian story is incredibly clear and her values are incredibly clear, but in terms of, so getting it all out there and making sure you're really getting all the details out there so that you can then truncate it down is important, right? Cause you're going to have different opportunities and different audiences and different goals in terms of when you're expanding your business. So I want us just to look real quick at um, this one minute pitch. And I want to just show how this entrepreneur brought in a piece of his story in a very brief but effective way. So give me one second. Let me pop it up here. Okay. So I'm going to share this and you should be able to hear it. It's just really, really quick. My job is to make college easier because students have a lot of fun. My name is Josh Light and I'm the CEO of Cuphead. And we Oops, sorry, y'all. Wait a second. We've actually adopted some of the things that we've we've developed inside um, when we work with young entrepreneurs in Kick Labs. Um, part of what we do, we get them pretty early, so they have to learn how to um, not only pitch for money but pitch for customers. Um, and it's amazing how bad they are. Um, so we actually make these guys condense their pitch into a one minute. Pitch. You still do you? Is it okay if he does his pitch? Can I do your one minute pitch? Sure. Okay, ready to go. Ready. Right. Who has a timer? Okay. Okay. Here, I'll hold you one. All right. Okay. Timer. Julia. By show of hands, how many of you have witnessed either a parent, a child, a friend, or maybe your spouse struggle with obesity? You don't have to raise your hand for this one, but think about it. Did you ever feel helpless in their struggle? If you have, you're not alone. Many people who have lived in a low income community like I have, where the obesity rate is above 50%, have experienced the same feeling of helplessness. That's why today I'm doing something about it. Good evening. My name is Horatio Hartz, and I'm the founder of Healthy Hearts Institute, the co op that will bring health and fitness back into our neighborhoods. HHI will turn empty lots into gardens and transform neighborhood food deserts into green nutritional oases. We will turn abandoned buildings into LEED certified fitness centers and provide our members safe places to exercise. Our goal is to get us back to the good old days when the community was ripe with nutritional foods, kids were outside running and playing, and the obesity rate was below 17%. So join the Healthy Hearts Institute and let us empower the beat of your heart. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so really quick, really basic pitch, one minute, but what were the values that were inherent in Horatio's story? Health, right, um, family, having places to play. And we learned a little bit about him in a very, very, very brief time, right? We learned that he lived in a neighborhood where um, you know, he felt a sense of helpless, helplessness because of people struggling with obesity. And we learned that very, very quickly. So there's a story within that. And so I just wanted to show this example to not make you feel overwhelmed by all of these elements, right? 
it's it, you you have the ability to narrow down and drill down into the basic element of your story and your values in a pitch in a very short amount of time. It's just about getting it all out there, identifying what those values are and what the story is, and then figuring out how to condense it. So with that being said, um, it's one o'clock and I am so honored that you have spent this time with me and with the Venture Center, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me if you want to learn more about the yarn um, or to talk about how we can potentially help drill down and figure out the core of your story. But hopefully you've taken some things away from today that will help you in your entrepreneurial I'm so excited for all of you and for this time. Thanks to the Venture Center. And I'll hand it back over to Ashley. Thank you so much, Hillary. If we were all together, it would be a standing ovation. That was fantastic. Um, lots of nuggets of wisdom in there. And again, this is recorded. I got a couple of messages. How do, how do I get this material? How do I watch it back? So uh, this is recorded uh, via Zoom and also on our Facebook page. You can go to our Facebook, the Venture Center, and, and check this video out. And we'll also be sure to share it in our newsletter so, so the masses can see this. Um, again, thank you so much to Hillary for taking the time uh, to present this information. Storytelling is such a huge component of entrepreneurship, being able to uh, share that, that information with your customers and clients and potential folks to buy your product or service is, is valuable. And so thanks again for, for sharing these, these bits of information. One last thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Frost Accounting Firm, the Little Rock Regional Chamber, Simmons Bank, and Wright Lindsay Jennings. Again, don't forget all of our programs are up on our website. You can sign up for those to learn more. And have a happy Wednesday, everybody. We hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Hillary. Bye, everybody.